Hey y'all, um, I apologize because this might get a little uh, preachy, uh, but there's something going on right now. It's like for, and for those of you who are overseas who are not directly involved in United States politics and you know all the thing that's w what is I'm sure going to make every voting American citizen ready to throw up before the end of this year, then alone next year's election. Okay. There's a rhetoric going around the United States right now. I call it the fair share rhetoric. It's implying that the rich have all the money and they're not paying anything for having all the money. They, they own everything and they don't pay anything. I've been having a debate back and forth on this recently uh, and, and going over it and I've been trying to inject common sense mathematics into this argument and I've been getting my head bit off for it. So and, and what I've found out from the various discussions I've been having is that there's two types of people, actually three types of people. There's people who are purposely misleading because they just want the rich to pay more. There are people who are repeating something somebody told them because it was presented to them as facts and they trust people. So when somebody tells them something as a fact, they go and tell all their friends it's a fact and so on and so forth. And then there's type 3, which is a lot like type 1. They're not deliberately going around deceiving people but they honestly believe it, but they believe it like a theology. You know, there, there is no challenging their viewpoint, no anything, and any facts you try and put in front of them that challenge their viewpoint, they're going to go, no, 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 that doesn't exist, that isn't right, look at my facts, my facts tell you I'm right. Because they don't, they, 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 they have chosen somewhere inside to believe what they believe and they don't want to entertain any facts that show them that if what they believe they believe is all, then this is also what they believe okay so for the purposes of this we're going to just go through the math I am not making any statement one way or the other on whether the rich should pay more taxes or whether the tax cut should be extended to them or anything else. The reality is the United States of America has 14.7 plus trillion dollars worth of debt right now. We're going on 15 trillion. We need to be having a debate about our tax structure, but we need to be having a debate about the tax structure, who pays, how it pays. Uh, what shares are and so forth in the United States based on the actual facts of where wealth is, who has it, what the government's spending, what the national debt is, uh, and just trying to get the system back in whack. That is the debate we need to be having, and that debate is based on math and the actual numbers. So let's start taking a look at the actual numbers. Okay. First thing everybody needs to get familiar with is what a gross domestic product is. The basic formula for a gross domestic product is government spending plus surplus of exports over imports. In other words, exports minus imports. If you import more than you export, that's a negative number. If you export more than you import, then that adds to your gross domestic product. It either takes away or it adds to based on the ratio of exports to imports and what's going on there. The other factor in basic GDP calculation is the private sector's investment in industry. Now, the government can invest in industry, but if you count that number over under both government spending and invest in industry, then you're spending the same dollar twice. It's a gimmick and it can inflate the gross domestic product, but it's a fraudulent gross domestic product. So if you want to move government spending investing in the industry over to invest in industry, then you need to take that money away from government spending. For the purposes of these calculations, we're going to put all of the government spending numbers in the government spending number. 
and of course the other portion of which is the foundation of commerce is people buying things you know consumer spending at the end of the day we are talking about economics here the 2010 gross domestic product for the United States was estimated to be roughly 14.5 trillion dollars so let's continue to take a look at where those numbers came from as you can see here the government's contribution or government spending was estimated to be about 3.4 trillion dollars that's right we are in debt almost 15 trillion dollars and we're spending between three and four trillion dollars a year kind of makes you feel warm and tingly inside doesn't it so so far we have a little over 11 trillion dollars of the gross domestic product unaccounted for government spending accounted for a good chunk of it the United States has a trade deficit last year 2010 we exported 1.8 billion dollars worth of goods we imported 2.3 billion dollars worth of goods that's a trade deficit of about 500 million give or take which means that actually takes away from our gross domestic product but we're talking about trillions of dollars and there's a discrepancy of half a billion that is less than a thousandth so that 11.04 number isn't going to change we'd have to go out quite a few more digits to find how that number actually changed that means for 2010 the private sector contribution by the American people just doing what they do doing business going around spending money even though we're in a let's what are we calling this recession? I think the politically correct term is economic downturn. Spent or contributed roughly $11 trillion to the gross domestic product last year. Y'all need to keep that number in mind and in your head when you start going over this rhetoric about the wealth have this. 2009. 400 richest Americans, that less than 1% that is just being thrown to the sacrificial altar in this they need to pay their fair share, they have all the money argument, accounted for approximately $1.27 trillion. Or, based on the estimates of wealth in the United States, $53.1 trillion, 2.39% of the wealth. At that time, the 53.1 trillion is verifiable. We don't yet have hard numbers for 2011. That's why I'm talking about 2009, 2010 GDP, and now we're going to talk about 2010 wealth, which is one of the numbers being used to justify this. They're making all the money while we're going poor. Because on the surface, it does look like that. 2010 numbers. Y'all have probably seen these numbers. This is the one being used in all the articles and blogs being cited around the net. Forbes' richest 400 Americans have a wealth of $1.5 trillion. But if you remember, what was the 2009 number? 2009 number says they're 2.39% of the wealth. 2010 says they're 2.73% of the wealth. So the percent of the wealth they are went up. And so did the wealth in the country. The wealth in the private wealth for 2010 is estimated to be 54.9 trillion. That means roughly 20% of America's wealth, private wealth, is being contributed to the gross domestic product for 2010. Steep, but it does make sense. Those numbers add up. And this is a 12% 12 to 13 percent gain for the wealthy. That sounds horrible. The wealthy are making all the money. Ah, but we need to weigh that against another number. When did all of us in America start to go broke? For those of you who have closed your minds and forgot when this little fiasco started, 
it's towards the end of 2007 and over the course of 2008, which means if you really want to compare if people have recovered or not, you need to compare to 2007 numbers. So let's take a look at 2007 numbers. Well, that can't be right. They had more wealth in 2007. The wealth of the country privately held was less. They were 3.01%. The wealth was roughly $3 trillion less in the United States. And you know what? If anybody doubts that, every person who's going to go, wait a minute, those numbers can't be right, look me in the eye. Look me in my eye and tell me, your dollar spins as well today as it did in 2007. Tell me honestly with a straight face that you can go to the grocery store, to the gas station, on the whole, do the same amount of errands running around and basic living on a day-to-day -day basis your dollar could do in 2007. Some things are more, some things are less, but one thing almost everybody can agree on is your dollar does not go as far in 2011 or in 2010 as it did in 2007. So, here's the claim going around. And this is the, you know, this is a very simple equation, okay? Based on the numbers we've looked at for 2007, 2009, 2010, I think we can all agree the uber elite mega rich. Everybody's using 2010 numbers because Forbes publishes this stuff in September. I think the 2011 list is actually out. So, you know, we should go through it and add it all up and see where things are jiggling out. But we can't really weigh that yet because until we have gross domestic product for 2011 and everything else, we, can't, we have a hard time computing the allocations of wealth and everything else. So we'll have a number and we'll know how much it went up in ratio to 2010's number, but we can't put it in context in any well, shape, or form yet. We will be able to... Um, towards the end of first quarter next year, and we all should do that, because I'm sure this is going to become more and more of an issue in the upcoming election. But the basic formula you need to equate at, as you repeat all the things that are going around and being told to you, is private wealth equals one over whatever percent you think the mega rich control of the nation's wealth. Because at the end of the day, we're not talking about income, we're talking about wealth. And you should not confuse income directly with wealth, and vice versa. Just because I made a million dollars doesn't necessarily mean I'm one of the uber rich. And just because I only made $10,000 doesn't necessarily mean I don't have a high net wealth. So they can be very different things. They tend to be in line 90% of the time, but not always. So making that assumption, I'm going to go through some of the most common numbers I hear. If you're assuming they magically all of a sudden control 10% of the wealth, then you're assuming the privately held wealth of the United States has shrunk to about $20 trillion, in excess of $34 trillion of it over the last calendar year has dissolved away and is no longer held by U.S. citizens. And that, given in line that why a gross domestic product for 2011 is looking to be slightly less or on par with 2010, it's estimated that it's going to be a change of around 5%, which means you're also claiming that on average, American citizens are going out and spending either on business creation or consumer spending half their net worth, half the value of their home, half the value of their cars, half of everything they have. Does that make sense to you? When you go out in the world today, does it feel like that's how much people are spending? If you think they control 25% of the wealth, then you're saying $46 trillion has evaporated. The net wealth 
of privately held wealth by American citizens today is roughly $8 trillion. And you're saying, on average, Americans are spending 85% of their wealth, not their income, their wealth, their value of their home, their cars, everything. It doesn't feel like they're spending 50% of their value. Can you honestly tell me when you go out there that it feels like they're spending 80% plus? Do you think they have 40%? You know, 49 trillion dissolved. They're spending 90% of their wealth. 50, 50 trillion dollars dissolved. They're spending 92% of their wealth. The wealth of the nation is less privately held than $5 trillion. If you start getting up into numbers higher than 60%, you are saying the federal government's budget, what the federal government is spending, is more than the combined private wealth of all Americans. The private net worth of all Americans is less than the money our government is spending in a calendar year. And you are claiming that Americans, on whole, on average, some less, some more, but on average, Americans are spending 90% of their worth, value of their home, cars, everything. They're mortgaging themselves to the hill. They are spending 90% of their... Uh, see, I'm sorry, that's a change in 90%. Whoa. I've gone off here. I'm sorry. If you start getting higher than 60%, you're claiming Americans on average are spent, I'm sorry, I was reading the percent on the ch on how much of the wealth had disappeared. I have different numbers here. I apologize. If you get over 60%, the government number is still true because you're claiming the wealth is less than three the $3.4 trillion that the government is spending. But you're claiming on average Americans are spending every dollar they have in their home, their car, their mortgage, everything. More than three times over. Upwards, if you go with the 90% number, of five times. So getting on track with that logic, tell me, does this make sense to you? That the total wealth of all Americans, the total net worth of all private citizens in America, is less than what our federal government and governments are spending in a calendar year. Do you honestly believe that? If you believe that, we need to be having an entirely different conversation. Because I think we can all agree there's no way in hell that can even sustain for a few years, let alone another two, three, or four. <laughs> and we are going to do that for at least another two years, if not more. So ask yourself, does this add up? Does it make sense? Do you honestly believe that the American populace right now is spending somewhere between half of everything they own and five times of everything they own? Do you believe in less than a year somewhere between 60% and 95% of the wealth of America has gone poof, gone. That the middle class have just been entirely squeezed out of existence. And all we have now are the mega rich and the poor. That's it. There's nobody else. Because as you start getting closer to those high numbers, more and more that's what you're saying. Ask yourself, does that make sense? Can the American people be contributing that much money to the gross domestic product? Has that much of the wealth disappeared from the country? And can our federal government really be spending that much money if we only have that much money? Does it add up? Now, I've gone on about 20 minutes here. I've given you all some stuff to think about. If y'all disagree 
with my math, if you find a big gobbing hole in it, point it out. If you think, as some people I've had this conversation with, that the amount of wealth in the country has nothing to do with the percentage of the wealth held by people, I'd like to know how you derive a percentage of wealth without knowing how much wealth there is to start with. Okay? If you think that I'm way, way off topic here, that wealth, gross domestic product, and the amount of money the government's spending has nothing whatsoever to do with taxation, what we're saying, you know, if you, 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 if you think they have nothing to do with each other, I want you to explain that. If you like this, forward it on to your friends and family. If you don't like this, forward it on to friends and family as an example of a crazy opposition. I want America to sit down and do the math so we can actually have the debate we should be having. And that is, how the hell are we going to deal with this problem? I don't care whose fault it is. I don't care how we got here. I don't care. We're beyond that at this point. I honestly do not care. At this point, we need to deal with the facts of what they are today and figuring out a way to make the math actually add up. That means every time in the next year, during this whole election process, when somebody comes up and says, blah, 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 needs to blah, 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 blah. We need to sit down. We can't do it in our head. Pull out a sheet of paper and a calculator and do the math. Because at the end of the day, this is not complex math. This is math a grade schooler can do. So every single American citizen should be doing it. Peace out all. Hopefully I didn't piss too many of y'all off if y'all were on the other side of it. Or if you're still on the other side of it, I look forward to the debate.